Well, you know what they say. It's not the size of the NAS that counts. It's how you use hardware acceleration. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I am talking about the QNAP TS262, or if you pay attention to the sticker on the tops, TSX62. I'm just gonna call it the 262 from QNAP is a two bay NAS. Full disclosure, yes, QNAP did send this over to me. That does not affect my review. Also, I'm sending this back. So they sent this out to me. In fact, Seagate sent out some loaner drives. So thank you very much QNAP and thank you very much Seagate for sending me out some loaner hardware for today's video. Now, because NASs have quite a few different options to install different softwares and things that you could do with the device, I do have to kind of pick and choose things that stood out to me, things that I actually want to talk about on video. That doesn't necessarily mean, however, that it's the only thing this NAS can do, it's just the things that stood out to me, things that I thought maybe I would use if this actually was something that I was going to keep and integrate into my network. So as you could guess, yes, I did test Plex on this with surprising results. And then I ran through and set up some surveillance stuff. And then I kind of played around with photos. Kind of interesting. I didn't see myself going there, but I saw the app and I'm like, Interesting. Now this NAS has a ton of hardware acceleration and AI and things just built into it. Like the abilities that it has built into it, especially for photo processing, the AI capabilities boost that to where it's significantly faster than a lot of processors, which came to a big surprise because the hardware acceleration, the IGPU built into this, just let it slap on Plex. Like it was kind of crazy. I mean, this thing only has two cores and two threads. I kind of went into this thinking, uh, it's just gonna be a little NAS, you know, no big deal. Pleasantly surprised though, the Intel Celeron 4505 is what powers this thing. And because of the UHD integrated graphics from Intel, it was able to put out 17 1080p transcoded streams in Plex all the way down to two megabits per second. That's right, this little device, <laughs> I, it made me feel really old because my very first server that was an entire 4U server could not even touch what this thing can do. That's hardware acceleration though. I mean, I have to just accept this. I am old, the old ways of transcoding is gone. We don't have wagon wheels anymore. We don't make fires to cook food, you know? Everything is just new and better. Now I ran this test with the OG Back to the Future file. It's like 12 megabits per second. It's HD, it's 1080p. It just hardware accelerated, transcoded all the things, 17 of them. And I feel like I could have kept going, but it was taking a very long time to load the next video. And I got two stutters that was kind of in a row and then it leveled out. But I just kind of called it there, mainly because I was upset. It was way better than my first server and it's so small. But you know what? It's not just the integrated graphics that I think helped me get to that 17 number. This is a two bay NAS, which means you can put two, two and a half or three and a half inch drives in the slots as its primary drives. This NAS has the ability to add on two additional M.2 NVMe drives. And I just happen to have a spare two terabyte NVMe drive laying around. So I use that to boost the storage on this. Now I set up both of the hard drives in here to run as a RAID 1 array. And then I use the M.2 NVMe drive drive in order to accelerate that via the cache. Now, I'm not saying that that is solely responsible for this thing hitting 17 transcodes in Plex. All I'm saying is that having cache for all those random reads that it has to do in order to transcode that file is handy. However, there is one major caveat to these expansion M.2 slots, and that is they only run at PCI Gen 3 by one. And that gives it a speed limit of about one gigabytes per second or eight gigabits per second. When in today's world, NVMe drives are running three, four, five, six gigabytes per second in read and write, that is definitely kind of limiting its ability in terms of speed. However, you're really only going to notice this speed if you're really using it for like a container, like a Docker container or running a virtual machine, something like that where it's actually within the device and it can actually use more speed than that. Because if you're transferring over network, you're gonna have a speed limit of two and a half gigabits per second, assuming you have the appropriate switch to handle it. This comes with a 2.5 gig NIC. It can work on a one gig or a hundred or 10 or probably whatever you wanna connect it to underneath two and a half gig, but it can handle up to 2.5 gigabits per second. And it has a PCIe Gen 3 by two 
PCI expansion port, meaning that you can slap in a 10 gig NIC if you want to, if you really want that additional speed, which I am totally for, by the way, adding more speed is always better, especially if you're going to be accelerating this with an NVMe drive. 2.5 gigs though is a nice touch. I've said this before. I think that a lot of things need to move to the 2.5 gig standard, leaving one gig in the dust, like yesteryear's 100 megabit connections. Getting two and a half times the speed without having to pay the cost of a 10 gig connection seems pretty reasonable to me. So yes, if you absolutely need it, you can add on 10 gig. Something you cannot add on, however, is more memory. The QNAP TS-262 comes with four gigabytes of built-in memory, which means you do not have the ability to upgrade or change how much memory this thing has. It's just four gigs, which interesting enough, they actually have a bigger version of this. I think it's the 464, 462, and it comes with two gigs of memory, but it's so dim, and you can take those sticks out and you can put up to 16 gigabytes worth of memory in it, but you have to buy the original two gig and then you have to throw that away and then you have to get more memory if you wanna go up to 16. And if you go on their website, memory's like two to $300 and the four bay version of this is I think about $120 more or $100 more than this one is, but it does come with less RAM. And if you really want more RAM, which I feel like most people are gonna to want to at least purchase two gigabytes worth of extra RAM, you're gonna to have to pay a little bit more in order to get that. Aside from that, from what I can tell, the four bay has the same specs as this one. One thing I can say though, in terms of the four gigabytes of RAM is that it went pretty far. The first thing that I did when I set this up was go in and set up Plex. That way I could test it in a completely clean environment. I just wanted to make sure there was nothing else in the background. That way Plex was just running 100% clean and I could see exactly what it could do by itself, which is 17, kind of wild, only with four gigs of RAM, mind you. But furthermore, the four gigs of RAM did really well, not only running Plex, but also running a software called QVR Pro. Now this is the surveillance software used on QNAP systems. This was the second thing that I set up because, you know, Plex, security cameras, like my thing. And right off the bat, I noticed that you can have up to eight cameras out of the box and that's licensing, that's not ability. It said it can handle up to 128 cameras, but it gives you the first eight for free, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that's more than Synology and it handled it pretty well. It was able to scan my network, find all of the ONVIF cameras automatically. I was able to add them all in one screen, just username, password, just click on them. I mean, it was very super simple to set up. Very super simple going with it. I originally set it all up with just four cameras and then I later expanded it with one or two more cameras because then later I found out that not only can I set up the eight cameras, I can use the QBR, I can set up the desktop app and I can do all that other stuff, which is all cool and it went really smoothly. But then I found out that I can actually plug in a USB camera into one of the USB ports on this device, which it has four of them. This thing has two USB 2.0s and then two USB 3.2s, all in the type A format, which ironically, theoretically, if I were to connect a USB NVMe drive, I could actually get faster speeds out of the NVMe drive. I didn't test that, I just kind of thought about that because one of the features that you can plug in external drives like those uh, hard drive enclosures that you normally shuck from like, let's say Western Digital, you can plug in external drives and use it as part of your system. So plug in a couple NVMe drives and good to go. But anyway, I found out that you can plug in a USB webcam into this, go in, install a software, I forgot, it's like USB cam, two or something like that, it will actually take any webcam that you have plugged into it and allow you to rebroadcast it as an ONVIF capable security camera, which I did. I plugged this thing in, set it right in front of this, and sure enough, I was able to hook it up to the QVR software and then monitor it just like any security camera, which now that I'm to the end of that story doesn't seem very climatic, but I was kind of excited that that was a thing. So now you're excited that that's a thing. Of course, everything you do with this NAS is going to consume resources. It's going to take RAM and processing power, et cetera. So the more you do, the slower it's going to get. However, what I can say is that as I was using it, even though installing new software packages did become slower, like throughout just installing and trying new things, 
Overall, the usage of things like the QVR, setting up Plex, starting Plex, and transcoding a file, even after I went through and did all the things with the QVR setup and all that other stuff, it seemed to run pretty smoothly with only some noticeable dips in performance. Which leads me to the photo processing thing because like it's, this has a bunch of AI stuff, like a bunch of AI capabilities built into it. And it touts like up to 65% boost in a photo, you know, AI registration of faces or recognition or whatever it does. This is really something that I've never experienced before because I've never set up an AI processing for photos but this time I did. I set up the photo station. There's something called QMagi or QMagi that goes in there and processes and identifies faces, allows you to name them, which is actually pretty accurate when it comes to faces. Sometimes you have to go in there and merge a couple different faces and kind of help train it and tune it to who is who in your photos. But after that, it's actually pretty decent at recognizing people and faces. Something it's not terribly great at is like objects or things in general. It kind of, you know, mixes up that. It's like, oh, this is, you know, artwork or this is a cat or whatever it is. And it's just completely wrong. But when it comes to faces, it's pretty good. Or more importantly, it's really fast. I dropped the photos in there. It processed it, created thumbnails and everything just way faster than what I thought it would. Before I knew it, it had already analyzed all the faces and started asking me for the names of the people that it found in the photos. And the photos thing was the last thing that I set up. I already had Plex, QVR, and just a host of other things that I was just trying out in the background already running. So in my mind, I'll just add another check mark to the bonus category for hardware acceleration for this thing. I mean, who cares if this thing only has two cores, two threads, eight total PCIe lanes? I mean, it is not a big beefy CPU. The hardware acceleration, on the other hand, really comes in the clutch. Although there is a benefit to not having a big massive CPU and that is power. This thing can operate about 14 watts, just kind of chilling with the hard drive spun up and it only has a 65 watt adapter, which means after you have everything plugged in, including external devices, it's not going over 65 watts and that is full send. And that Intel Celeron processor is what allows it to do that while still being able to push out 17 transcoded Plex streams. God, it just hurts me to say that. But if I'm talking about media, I should take a note on this. This actually has an HDMI out and you can install something called the Hybrid Disk Station. The Hybrid Disk Station allows you to essentially turn this into its own media player. And then you can host your own media files on this and then also play them. And you can use the HDMI out to do that. Now I read on their website that it has an infrared receiver in here. I don't know where it is and I don't have an infrared remote, but Apparently, if you go on Amazon, you can find like a QNAP capable infrared remote. That's basically like a media remote. So if you plug this in, you install that hybrid disk, disk station, then you install one of their softwares that plays your media. And then you have this not only as your local NAS hosting all your files, but then also as your media player playing your files. And then you get a remote for it. Well, I mean, it's just kind of like an all in one multi purpose tool at that point. It's doing all this while running virtual machines, Docker containers, surveillance stations. I mean, that's kind of impressive. In fact, overall, the QNAP TS-262 was pretty much a total positive for me. I didn't really find a whole lot of things that I didn't like. But the things that I found that I didn't like are like the App Center, you know? It's just a whole row of ads that I really wish I could just, you know, close out of or get rid of because it just constantly moves. That's just a small annoyance thing though. It's not really a big deal. Or another one, the USB camera feature, which I didn't even know was a thing. It was like a whole new feature to me. Uh, I wish that I could control PTZ with that because I can plug in, let's say an Instalink 360. It recognizes that it has the option in the surveillance software in order to connect or at least identify a, a model as the Instalink 360, which is PTZ if you're not familiar with that webcam. And I couldn't control the PTZ with that. And even though it's not really a big deal, it's more of just a number and it's like, okay, how often do you really use it? The Gen 3 by one NVMe drives, I wanna be upset about it. I wanna be upset about it. I wanna think, oh, give me more speed. But then I just really start to think like, how often do I go over one gigabyte per second and read and write? And if I do, how long is that sustained? Like a part of me wants more speed just because it's like the lowest of PCI Gen 3. But the other part of me actually just tries to think to myself, well, one, how often are you actually going to use it in a NAS? I mean, yeah, you can do virtual machines and you can have Docker containers, you know, stuff like that. But I don't really feel like I'd feel it. Two, you know, just because this is a small device, it's got one little fan or two little, you know, it's got one little fan in here. 
right? Small device, one little fan. It's got to keep things cool. I actually installed this without a heat sink. I installed the NVMe drive without a heat sink. So being that it's not running full speed that it's capable of and that four or five gigabytes per second, that means it's going to produce a lot less heat, which means cooler the better. So even though surface level me says big number better, it's really hard for me to justify that argument. So with all that said, overall, the QNAP TS-262 is impressive. Yes, it is only a two bay NAS, but I think this is actually perfect for people who just want to get into a NAS device, they wanna throw in a couple drives, they don't need 300 terabytes or whatever crazy number, they just wanna put maybe a couple tens in there or a couple 20s. They want enough to be able to make backups of their files on their local network. Maybe they want to set up some backups for their computers to automatically go to a NAS, which by the way, actually that's one thing. Synology offers like a built-in app that you can install that does a, an image of your computers and backs it up to the NAS. This one does not have anything like that. It's got a bunch of things for like backing up files and automation for when files are dropped, emails and sent, and all kinds of file stuff but it doesn't have anything specifically for backing up or imaging devices. So that is one thing in Synology's court that they have over this. But still, with just an Intel Celeron two core, two thread processor, the hardware acceleration comes in and just knocks things out of the park. It's able to rip through the AI processing to recognize faces and things within your photos super quick. It's able to be directly integrated into things like Plex to do hardware accelerated transcoding. That way you can get more bang out of your buck and have your own personal media server just just cranking stuff out. And while it's doing all of that, also host your own security cameras, allowing you to keep an eye on your property, whether you are there or away. Okay, another side note, the QVR Pro, uh, the surveillance software does have the option for AI for recognizing people and stuff, but you have to purchase it. I don't know how much it was. I didn't want to buy it. So it has it. You can use that and you could, you know, enhance this with AI. I just did not buy the license. Either way, coming into this video, I did not expect this much performance out of a two bay NAS. Just to be 100% honest, kind of did not think it was going to perform that well. I really severely though underestimated integrated graphics. So guys, if you wanna check this out, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. Again, thank you to QNAP and Seagate for sending out the hardware in order for me to test this out. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to post that in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. Although there is a benefit, although there is a benefit, although there is a, although there is a benefit to not having a big massive CPU and that is power.